Well, we're ready for another book review. We love book reviews, but this is food. We love food. I mean, people are so glued to the Food Channel. And so we were very fortunate to be able to review the Mediterranean Diet Cookbook by Denise Hazim. And and I have to say that uh, the cover just got me the minute I saw that. And, of course, we know that cooking the Mediterranean style is now so healthy And we're so glad that you're able to call in now from Irvine, California. So welcome to our show, Denise. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. I'm glad you you guys enjoy Mediterranean cooking. Right. Well, it's interesting. Uh, My uh, my daughter-in-law, who is actually from Italy, she when when they had triplet grand have triplet grandchildren, and when they were teeny babies. I noticed she put in olive oil into a little bit of olive oil into every baby food jar, and I looked at that. And of course, as a mother-in-law, I never said a word. But <laughs> as I got to think about it, and the children are very healthy, that probably was the best thing they could do. Yeah, the olive oil, and you know, a lot of natural things that come out of the Mediterranean are just so good and so uh, you know they're homeopathic. So, you know, you get that from the food, you get that from the ingredients. It's a, it's a really uh, amazing culture in the Mediterranean. Well, and of course, it looks like you you said in your uh, biography that you come from a large Lebanese family. So how was that? It was a lot of fun, a lot of chaos. I actually just got back from Michigan for the holidays, and, you know, it's, it's a it's a full packed house every single night so it's fun with a lot of food a lot of people a lot of loud screaming yelling <laughs> shouting laughing dancing so that's that's how it is every night <laughs> sounds wonderful and and so did you learn and did is that why you like cooking from your mom or your grandma uh yeah mostly you know obviously i was always around my mom and you know she was always in the kitchen i'd hang on to her and I always wanted to see what she was doing and learn how she did it. And, you know, I, 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 just, I just started watching cooking shows when I was, I don't know, maybe four years old. I'd watch Jeff Smith. Um, I don't I even remember. I think it was on PBS or something. And then there was this one Amish lady I would watch. And you know, this is before Food Network. And I'd just sit there and I'd watch it. And my mom was like, what is wrong with this girl? So, <laughs> from a very young age, I was glued to the... TV or to the kitchen. Well, isn't that great? Now, the one thing that I don't, I haven't asked some of our other chefs, and I should have, I was thinking about that. So what kind of uh, pots do you use? I mean, is Lebanese cooking require different kind of pots than other kind? No, it's the same. I, I Honestly, I get all my pots from, like, Macy's and Target and whatnot. So, And I honestly, I buy pieces. So I don't really have, like, a full set. I buy pieces. So, you know, if I see a pot that I like, I'll buy it. Um, and I just collect them all. So, no, none of my pots are matching, but they all are fantastic. I love them. I, I can't do without any of them. So, the reason I ask is because I come from a Hungarian background, and my mother and grandmother uh-huh. had special pots, and they were ugly. I mean, they were beautiful, <laughs> but they made stuffed cabbage, and they made the Hungarian goulash, and that was their pot. And, of course, then they they I got it hand, it was a hand-me-down. Well, in my kitchen, I said, I can't use those pots. <laughs> 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 but I actually, I have still been able to, I haven't used them. I, my mother and my grandmother have passed away, so they're not hearing this. But I have bought other pots, and it seems like it comes out just as well. So, <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Okay, so let's talk about your cookbook. When you're, you decided you were going to write this book, how did you decide which recipes you were going to put in? And, you know, you had to make choices. I don't even remember how many recipes were in the book. Correct. Well, there's, there's over 200 recipes in the book. And honestly, when I picked the recipes, you know, there's, there's thousands of recipes in the Mediterranean culture. And what I tried to do was to pick the ones that were most satisfying and stuck to the ones that would provide the most health benefit. So obviously there's recipes that are, you know, deep fried or desserts that are really fattening. But I tried to veer away from those. But there are some recipes in the book that are fried or that, you know, the desserts are made with fatty cheeses. 
But the thing to remember, and this is part of the Mediterranean culture, is to eat in moderation. So, you know, when they have a piece of, you know, knefe, which is the um, their version of a sort of a cheesecake, you know, they have a piece of it. They don't have a large super jumbo slice with extra syrup on top. You know, everything is in moderation in the Mediterranean culture. Well, I was thinking about uh, some of the, and I, I told you, my three favorite recipes, and I haven't made them yet, but I'm going to, especially the Mediterranean omelet. I love eggs, and that omelet sounds fantastic. Now, I never use uh, Kalamata olives. I, ju- I just don't use the olives. I use the olive oil. What's the difference uh-huh. of using the olive oil and the olives? Well, the olive oil, um, I think olive oil and olives sort of have a different kind of flavor. So olive oil has that um, smooth, silky flavor, whereas adding the olives, olives are a little bit more tangy. So they add that a little bit of tang to the dish. Now, some people don't like olives or they don't like, you know, that flavor in the dish, and you can definitely omit those if you don't like them. You know, they sort of serve that briny flavor um, that kind of adds a different element to a dish. And, well, the other thing is it, it does add some beauty. I love to see the little black spots. You know, oh, the... <laughs> yes. Oh, definitely color. It's all about color and presentation uh, in, in these Mediterranean dishes. And the other thing that I chose was, by the way, this, I uh, just want to tell you again, this is Denise, and for short, Didi Med Hazim. And, of course, she wrote this wonderful book called The Mediterranean Diet Cookbook. You must go and out and get that book. Uh, it's a great gift. Now the holidays are upon us. Go get the book. But she, ha- what she actually did, and I liked uh, every all her recipes were organized, such as breakfasts and brunches, or lunches from salads, or super soups, or soothing stews, or meaty lunches, or very vegetarian lunches, great grain and bean dishes. Snacks, sauces, spices, condiments, and more. So it was great because you could go through it and say, well, I'm looking for a really good sauce for this. And then you could find it. But getting back, I want to talk about the cauliflower stew. That really piqued my interest, and I haven't made that yet either. Tell me about that. Well, the cauliflower stew is something that definitely brings back memories of my childhood. Um, You know, I think for my mom, it was easy, you know, with four kids to make a stew, and obviously the stews are usually served with rice or some sort of pilaf, um, you know, it was easy for her to make it, and, you know, this is what we had to eat. So it's, it has a, a vegetable usually, it has a meat, and it has that nice uh, uh, soupiness from the tomato broth or whatever broth was used for it. So I think the cauliflower stew, I think it's filling. I think it has its vegetable element, and it has, you know, the soupy element, it has that warmth, and, and it's filling. So, you know, what, what more can you really ask for? Well, tell me about the chickpeas. I don't usually cook with chickpeas. Do I have to add the chickpeas to the stew? No, you don't. That adds a little bit more fiber, uh. obviously, and protein. So you can or you don't have to add them. And if you want to go vegetarian, you can omit the meat and just keep the chickpeas. So there's always different ways of you know, altering the recipes. And I try to get that across with my viewers, you know, whenever I do any of my videos. It's like, don't think that just because I put meat, you have to put meat. You can omit that, use a vegetable broth, and use a different protein uh, substitute, some sort of bean, a chickpea. Chickpeas are so versatile and so readily available now, so that's that's kind of my go-to alternative protein. Am I using a canned chickpeas? You can use canned or you can use fresh. Now, what my mom does, um, and what sometimes I'm a bit too lazy to do, but is really good and does make a bit of a flavor difference, is you get the dry chickpeas that you can find at a lot of stores. You need to soak them overnight until they rehydrate, and then you boil them in water with just a little bit of baking soda, probably half teaspoon baking soda, for about half an hour, and that will get them tender drain them off, and then you could freeze them in, like, Ziploc bag portions. You just put them in the freezer. Whenever you want to make hummus or throw them in a stew, just take them out, let them defrost a little, mm. and then use them. Good advice. But let me just tell you about this Mediterranean, <clears throat> I'm sorry, the cauliflower stew. 
So I don't use a lot of beef. I was thinking I could use turkey. You can use turkey. You can use lamb. Another thing that I do as well because uh, I have a, a youngster and, you know, sometimes beef is a little bit harder for them. I use chicken. So I'll oh. get a chicken breast, a boneless chicken breast, skinless. I'll cut it up. I'll saute it a little bit with some salt and olive oil, and then I'll set it to a thought to the side, and I'll just add it in at the end. Mm. But it's really yeah. the cauliflower that the cauliflower florets. Now, I do need some advice because I do love ca- cauliflower, but I don't really know. I mean, I usually put it in water, you know, a little water, and I just let it keep boiling till they just fall off. Is that what you do? Yeah. Uh, pretty much. I mean, you, you don't want to cook it to where they're disintegrating in the stew. You want to cook it just until they're al dente. Because remember, when you turn off the heat, the heat from the stew is going to continue to cook the cauliflower. So mm-hmm. you don't want to, you know, kill the cauliflower by overcooking <laughs> it. You want to just cook it till it's al dente and then let it rest a little bit. Well, um, that's great advice. Let me tell everybody again, I'm talking with Denise Hazim, who is calling in from... Uh, Irvine, California, and she wrote this great book. It's, it's a great recipe book. It's called The Mediterranean Diet Cookbook. The reason it says that is because a lot of the recipes are full of vegetables. It, if you just stayed on her recipes, you you would lose weight, and it's very, very good. Um, and we're going to talk about yogurt cake in a minute, but let me tell you a little bit about her. She's very beautiful, and if you see on the November issue, you'll see on page 16, and uh, you'll, you'll be able to read the review. But let me just tell you, she actually acquired a love of the Mediterranean cooking at a very young age, growing up in a large Lebanese family. And um, she was exposed early onto a range of cooking techniques from her mother. Denise continues her love of cooking at her website, uh, which is ddmed.com, D-E-D-E-M-E-D.com. And uh, it's Didi's Mediterranean Kitchen. And she teaches uh, how to cook the Mediterranean way. She has very easy instructions. Um, they're all on videos. She's actually appeared in the Wall Street Journal, the CNN, uh, and many other nationwide outlets. And, of course, you can get her book by going to her website, ddmed.com, or just go to amazon.com. And it's a great holiday gift. You can buy this. And there's no one that would uh, t- take this book and Give it to someone else. You know, what do we call that when you change, when you give books, you get something, not a book, but there's a word, gifting. Uh, you don't... <laughs> re, 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 re-gifting. Re-gifting. I don't think no it'll one's, be no one's <laughs> going to re-gift this book. It is so pretty. You just want to keep it on your counter anyway. Buy one of those little plexiglass um, uh, stands and put it on there, and it's just beautiful. So let's talk about the yogurt cake, because I love yogurt, and this this is one I have ready to do for the holiday. Amazing. You know, one thing that a lot of people don't associate is yogurt adds a lot of moisture to baked goods. I even add yogurt in my cheesecake. You know, sometimes cheesecake can get a bit too dense. Right. I add a cup of I add a cup of yogurt to my cheesecake, Greek yogurt, because it has that nice, thick, smooth, silky flavor, and it adds so much moisture to any cake recipe or any cheesecake, or any baked goods, really. It's, it's amazing. And, you know, even, you know, I'm on Pinterest. Everybody's on Pinterest nowadays. And sometimes I'll look through Pinterest, and you'll just see how more uh, often you'll see yogurt used in these type of recipes. So I think it's picking up. It's also available now, so readily available, at any of these grocery stores, Trader Joe's, Ralph's, Kroger's, Myers, I mean, whatever local stores in your area, I'm sure there's Greek yogurt in your dairy section. Or you can make your own Greek yogurt using my Greek yogurt recipe. Oh, te- very well, simple to make. Oh, I'd like to know that. Now, I was just going to ask you, I don't eat anything but Greek yogurt. And that I've been doing that for a year. Uh, I don't know, as long as it came out, at least here in South Florida. And there's definitely a difference in the taste. But I, I have made yogurt before, the regular yogurt. You know, you get the little dishes with a little sample and then keep making them. How do you make Greek yogurt? The same thing? 
Uh, it's similar. You know, you have to obviously start off with the right. starter. So, right. you know, either way, you're going to have to buy some Greek yogurt from the store. Or if your neighbor has Greek yogurt, just borrow a cup from them. Right. And, you know, you bring the, the milk up to temperature till it's hot. Let it cool back down a little bit. Stir in the Greek yogurt. Cover it. Let it sit on the countertop so it ferments for a few hours. Put it in the fridge for a few days, and then you have your Greek yogurt. Yeah, and tell me, though, as a chef and as a nutritionist, which you have really become, what is the advantages? Uh, is there health advantages of Greek yogurt? Definitely. The, the probiotics that are in the Greek yogurt are very good for di- your digestive system. It's also good for your immune system. Um, we have to remember, in the Mediterranean, they eat Greek yogurt, like, every day. It's in almost mm. all their meals. Mm. You know, it's served on the side. It's you know, served when the hot summer days, you know, they don't go reach for an ice cream, they reach for some Greek yogurt, Hmm. you know, to cool them down. So it has a lot of health benefits. I see the calcium that's in the yogurt, all the probiotics. It's it's, it's very good all around. Well, tell me about uh, the, do we have to refrigerate, I mean, I always refrigerate it, but do you have to refrigerate it? Yes. You do, just like you do the yeah. other yogurt. So, okay, what right. else would you suggest that we use the Greek yogurt for? Honestly, I use it in the, for my breakfast. For, I make a little parfait. I'll throw some uh, toasted oats on there with some fresh fruit. Um, I eat it on the side. So sometimes I make these stews for my daughter. And she, I mean, I, I got her started on Greek yogurt when she was a baby. So, you know, I'll, and sometimes when babies have a, a unsettled stomach, just make some plain rice, mix in some Greek yogurt with the rice, and the babies love it. It's just, it's a great, you know, go-to, um, go-to uh, a side, especially when somebody's feeding, feeling uneasy or if you just want something quick and you want a healthy snack. So it doesn't have to be for breakfast. You can have it in the afternoon. You can have it you know, for for, uh, after-dinner snack, yogurt with some fruit. You can even throw some um, organic uh, strawberry jam, which I do sometimes on there. I love it. Oh, that sounds good. (laughs) Right. You know, instead of buying those little swirl yogurt packs in the stores that are filled with sugar and carbohydrates and unnatural ingredients, you can do it yourself. Buy some organic uh, jam and you have your Greek yogurt, swirl some in, and there you go. (laughs) That's great. Well, I actually like it without any sweetener. The only thing I will put are blueberries or strawberries or something else in it. Uh, and one day I had some fresh figs, and I put the figs in it. I mean, I just like the Greek yogurt, and I like fruit. But I always like to put it in a very elegant glass, like a champagne glass or something, and eat it. Yeah. And I always put a sprinkle, a little cinnamon on it. Oh, that sounds good. I've never thought of cinnamon on it. Well, because I was told by so many nutritionists that cinnamon is so healthy for you. Right. And so right. that's what it I've is. been using. But I do, I'm do. i glad you shared that with the uh, everybody. Just buy the Greek yogurt. It is very, very good. You can buy them in small little containers, large containers. And um, and if you haven't had you not time for breakfast, just grab a couple of tablespoons of the yogurt, have an apple or something, and then you have something really good. Okay, so now let's um, let kind of let's, let's get, really get down to business and all this. You um, you have a, a whole way that you talk about healthy ingredients. You do talk about figs, and I know that, but you also talk about bulgur wheat, and I don't know much about bulgur wheat. Well, what is that actually? Bulgur wheat is a kind of grain that's filled with a lot of a complex carbohydrates, and it's a great alternative to rice. So, um, you know, I know some people like to steer away from the empty carbs that are in rice sometimes, but bulgur wheat is very versatile and it's very healthy. It has protein, it has fiber, and it's it's flavorful. It has that nice, nutty, earthy flavor. So I, I, I love using it. And you can make a pilaf as an alternative to rice. Um, you can make it and... Um, cook it like sometimes I like to make a broth I'll throw in some meat whether it's turkey or beef or lamb or um, I'll throw in some chickpeas and I'll throw in a vegetable whatever vegetables in the refrigerator with some sauteed onions let that simmer a little bit throw in a cup or two of the bulgur wheat let it cook for 10 minutes and you have yourself a 
very, very flavorful pilaf that you can eat with a cup of Greek yogurt on the side. Oh, so that's great. Now, um, I when I go to eat in a, I guess it's a Lebanese, yeah, there's a Lebanese restaurant, you get lamb, but I don't remember they're serving yogurt. Am I wrong? Am I trying to remember? Like well, on the I plate. Think it's, I, I think it's more of a, I don't think that restaurants serve it as often because obviously when you go to restaurants, they're serving the kebabs and whatnot. Right, right. But it's, it's, more, it's more of something that's always available in the Mediterranean household. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now what I wanted to ask you about with, with all this cooking is what happens um, when you say you throw things in. Let's talk about soup because soup's my favorite thing, and I am sure you have some favorite soups, like like maybe not just vegetable, but what's what's a favorite soup of yours? I would have to say probably um, the yellow lentil soup. I love that soup. It's so smooth in flavor, and it's really easy to make. You can make it with any vegetables you have on hand. If you don't have any vegetables, you can just make it without any vegetables. Um, I think it's quick, and it's easy, and it's flavorful. So that that's probably one of my go-to soups. Do I have to um, add water to them, to them uh, and soak overnight? The lentils? Uh, no, for the lentils, no. Especially the yellow lentils or orange lentils. When, when you purchase them, they're orange in appearance. Um, but when you cook it, it, t- it tends to mellow down the color and it looks yellow. So when you cook it, you you know you get the lentils, you put them in a pot, you add some water, let them simmer, and you'll see that the lentils sort of disintegrate. And and you have to remember the orange lentils are different than the brown slash green lentils and those have more of a shell to them and they don't disintegrate as much as the um, orange lentils do. Okay, so now we've uh, disintegrated our lentils and and what am I putting in there? Carrots and celery and onion? Carrots, celery. I like to saute my onions a bit before adding them to the pot. Sometimes I'll even add some raw onions to the pot. I'll saute some onions in olive oil because obviously when, you know, the onions carry a different flavor when it's in different forms. So when it's in the sautéed form, it's a little bit sweeter because you let those onions caramelize just a little bit. And it adds, obviously, a different element of flavor. You can add some vegetable broth to give it more flavor. You can add a cinnamon stick, celery, carrots, broccoli, peas. I mean, usually I'll just go through my refrigerator Whatever vegetables I have that I think will go with it, I just throw them in the pot. Hmm. And and it really, they turn out, and, and the flavor, wh- where's the flavor coming from? The vegetables or the lentils? The vegetable, the, I would say from the, from the, mainly from the lentils. And, you know, I like to add some spice to this. Cumin is, this, I would say, the sister spice to any lentil. Hmm. So you want to add a little bit of cumin. You want to add a little bit of coriander. Um, even some turmeric that adds color, and it's very healthy. Turmeric, I mean, I think the health benefits that they're uncovering from the turmeric is unbelievable. So I would say turmeric is something that I like to add as well. And it adds also uh, uh, some very good flavor. And we haven't really talked much about garlic. I mean, garlic is so important. In fact, I had a little bit of high blood pressure the other day, and my doctor was talking to me about it. He says, I want you to start eating a lot of garlic. I said, oh, I'm going to really have a very bad smell. He said, no, 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 just just have garlic. And I so I started taking some bread and toasting it and rubbing garlic on it with a little butter, and I loved it, and I was okay. But what is it with garlic? Are you cooking with garlic with everything you're making? I have to say garlic is probably in 99% of the recipes I make. <laughs> So I have to always have garlic on hand. I mean, I don't really add it to the the soup, but definitely I add it to the stews. I add it to whenever I saute any vegetables. I add it to my meat. I mean, I really add it to almost everything that I make. It's in my salad dressing. So, you know, it's it's it has just so much flavor and so much health benefits. Garlic and onions, I would say, are pretty prevalent in almost every Mediterranean dish. All right, and what uh, your garlic is it fresh that you're just you're you know chopping up? Yeah, definitely fresh garlic, but 
You know, if you don't have it, sometimes I'll go to my garlic powder and I'll throw that in as well. It just adds so much flavor. I mean, even when I make mashed potatoes sometimes, I'll throw in either some roasted garlic or some garlic powder just to give it a little bit more flavor. Um, What about the garlic that you can buy in olive oil uh, in a jar? Is that okay? I think it's okay. Honestly, I've never purchased it. I know some of, like my mother-in-law, I know she purchases it. Um, I like to use fresh garlic. Again, garlic carries different flavors and it's different formats. So when you saute the garlic, it adds, you know, it's a different flavor. When it's raw, it's a different flavor. When it's in olive oil, it's a little bit more subtle flavor. Hmm. I mean, I think I think the olive oil that you get from that, garlic and the olive oil is amazing. I would definitely not throw away the olive oil that it's stored in. You can use that to cook with as well. Great. And, and I know that we, it's probably not Mediterranean, but um, thinking about coconut oil, are you using that at all anymore, at, at all? You know, I do sometimes use the coconut oil. I know um, my, my sister actually turned me on to it, and, you know, she said it's very healthy and whatnot. Um, I do use it sometimes with my rice, when I'm cooking my rice. I haven't really integrated it too much um, into my cooking just because I'm probably an olive oil addict, and I don't really know how to use anything but the olive oil. Um so, you know, slowly I, I add it in every once in a while. Um, but, again, I personally, just from seeing, you know, the, the living style and the longevity of life from people who live in the Mediterranean, and it's from what they use. And, obviously, their fat that they use is olive oil. So yep. why not stick to it? Right, right. right. Exactly. And, and uh and of course, we could go on and on with olive oil, the dark, the green, and the different shades of olive oil, and what that means. But I think we've just about run out of time. And I have to tell you, oh. this has been so exciting, Denise. I just loved having you, and I'm going to definitely get a copy directly to you of the magazine. And then I'm sure we'll Thank talk you. again. Definitely, yes. Definitely reach out to me. Let me know how your recipes turn out. I will. You have my email address. <laughs> I will. I you will. Have my email. You can find me on Facebook on Twitter, all those different social networks, and I really appreciate you having me on, and I hope everybody goes out and gets the book and enjoys it, especially for this holiday season. Oh, yeah. Well, you're great, and I am so happy that we got to talk, and thank you again, um, and have a a wonderful, happy eating time. (laughs) Thank you so much. You too. All right. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.